About what you expected from Blanton, or did he exceed your expectations? No, it's about what I expected. You know, Joe's been throwing the ball really, really well. And, you know, going into it, the, you know, the game plan was to see if we could get him through five, somewhere between 70 and 80 pitches with the lead, and it worked out perfectly. You know, he's worked really, really hard for this win. Um, you know, it's been a long time. Been, uh, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, rehabbing and a lot of getting himself in great shape and having to go back to the minors and, uh you know, so I was really, uh, really pleased for him. Yeah, baseball gives you these kind of stories every once in a while. What does it say about his drive, his perseverance to get back out there? Well, I mean, it says a lot about his, the, the, the type of competitor that he is and, um, you know, felt like he still had something in the tank. And quite frankly, when, you know, you get to spring training, you look at Joe Blanton and uh, even Ryan Matson for that, you know, you look at it and think, okay, well, you know, these guys, um, you know, they had good careers, but do they have anything left? And it was real evident early in spring training that they both had a lot left in their tank. And, uh, again, very astute signings by Dayton Moore, you know, to to be able to pick up Chris Young, Joe Blanton, Ryan Matson, Franklin Morales. These guys have all been key to our club, and they were all late signings or, uh, you know, way under the radar type signings. So been good for us speaking of a nice career nobody's won more games in this organization's history than than you what what does that mean to you well again you know with all due respect i think we'll just wait for one more win okay. before we cover all that but i appreciate it a little bit but you know since he's been here his high water mark was been 51 pitches so you know we'll have him ready to go 90 his next start um, it put him right in line. We just didn't want to push him past that. How about like his pumping strike from the get go? I think uh, it, it, I don't know. You said you thought he was going to do well, but six, I mean, just the first guy at first base, he strikes out number two. Yeah. Well, that's what he does. That's why he's so successful. You know, he can execute pitches. And, you know, people say, well, what do you mean he executes pitches? But, you know, he can hit all four quad quadrants of the plate with his fastball. He had a very good curveball, a very nice slider, and a nice changeup tonight. I mean, he was working all pitches, keeping them down. The one run that they got, you know, he made a mistake to uh, made a mistake to um, Gomez and, and got a breaking ball up, and he drove it in the gap, uh, and then tried to go back foot, I think, with a slider to uh, um, um, Gannett, the second baseman, and he and it ended up being middle. But um, for the most part, he. Did a really, really nice job of changing speeds, moving the ball around, and executing his pitches. It is. It is. That's a very good question because you sit back and you really root for those guys, you know. And we got into that fifth inning, and, um, you know, Dave's asked me, do we want to get somebody up in case Lynn gets up? And that, he was still three hitters away with two outs. And I'm like, yeah. And, you know, uh, Walk said, do you want to get somebody up for Braun? I said, no, no. This kid's worked too hard to get, you know, within one out of uh, a win. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let him face the next three hitters. Uh, but luckily he got LeCroy out and we didn't have to worry about it. Phenomenal at bat. That was a tremendous at bat. You know, just missed the home run, was fouling off tough pitches and got a pitch that he could drive. And, I mean, boy, did he drive it hard in that left center field gap. Well, I, I think it's, it's, it's important. I mean, you have to be able to do that because you know that um, you're going you're gonna to have, have your battles against other clubs. But, you know, any given night in Major League Baseball, you can go out and get your butt whipped. I mean, any – given night so you know we don't try to we don't we don't take any teams higher or lower or lightly uh we come out and just try to play winning baseball every single night Esky had a great night we had a bunch of guys that had good nights omar again you know swinging the bat well two hits uh, i want to say he got two rbis too didn't he i think he did just the one um yeah but, um, you know, our guys are swinging the bats really well. Hey, what do you say about the team chemistry? I mean, you have so many young guys, including Vincent, like a Madsen, boy, and the young, you know, and older guys, but they seem to 
fit right in and blend with the program? I mean, how difficult is that? Young and the old and the senior. Well, it depends on the personality and the people that you bring in. You know, again, we, you know, both of those guys um, were kind of, you know, I don't know how you say it, um, you know, hopeful signs. You know, you sign them and hope that they still have something left and can come in and contribute. Um, but we don't sign anybody without doing a real thorough check on everybody's makeup. You know, that's we, we can see for the most part when you sign a Morales or you sign a Chris Young, you can look at numbers. But we, we want to know can they fit in with our clubhouse? What kind of teammates are they? And will they be able to fit in with our young core? And uh, all four of those guys, the, the answer was absolutely. Uh, and we call a bunch of people. We talk to a bunch of their ex-teammates, ex-coaches, ex-managers to find out what kind of people these guys are before we make a commitment to them. And each and every one of these guys uh, has, has done a great job, just like all the reports said, of fitting in and being a part of our, uh, of our culture. So there is a lot that goes into that? Oh, yeah. yeah absolutely. No, I've never looked past character. I got burned one time with that. There was a guy. <laughs> there was a guy that uh, you know um, we were going to trade for, and I talked to people, and one guy said, "Look, don't get this guy, even if they give him to you, right?" But he was a decent enough player, and we finally made the deal, and boom! I, I should have listened to everybody. This guy was—I mean, he was bad. And um, I said, I'll never do that again. Character is very, very important. You can always find somebody to fill, fill a hole, um, but that character's got to be there. Um, the ball in the cell, was that crowd noise? Nah, yeah, yes, it was crowd noise. It was, it was a, 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 a case where both guys were going after the ball, both guys had a beat on it, and both guys called it at the exact same time, and neither one of them heard each other. All right, and they were both. You see, they're on their lips. They're both calling it, right? And then now, in their mind, they're both got it, and they're getting to the ball. And then, just at the last second, they both look, and they're still coming. And then here comes the break. So, yeah, it's kind of the same thing happened in St. Louis. Isn't it? Yeah. Did they, did they change? No, no, no. I mean, I talked to Rusty about it after the game because it's been, you know, that's probably about the third time that's happened. But you know, again, with Alex missing, you know, six weeks, they haven't had that much time together out there. And and you got to get to know the rhythms and and what your uh, you know what that outfielder um, next to you what he can cover and what he can't and uh, Rusty will get it cleaned up. It was great, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, to look up and see the fans uh, in the stands. You know, the te the telltale. For me, is I always look up in the upper deck, and when it's filled up up there pretty good, it's, we know it's going to be a good night. But I'm just glad we gave him a good game, sent him home happy.